Spirituality and healing. These are two constructs that are often put together by many people. And they talk about it in different ways. They'll talk about prayer for healing or healing prayer or the benefits of spirituality for healing or the way healing is spiritual in and of itself. Today, I want to talk about a particular aspect of spirituality and healing, and that's the way in which contemplative practice leads us to a sense of emotional healing. I'd like to invite you to subscribe to this channel and to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. Many people, when they begin a contemplative practice, have a sense of, of great peace and comfort. They feel relaxed. They feel like it's giving them something very different in life by letting go of stress and, and so many other kinds of discomfort in life. And so it's a surprise to some people when after a few weeks or a few months, in the midst of engaging in their contemplative practice, whatever it is, whether it's meditation or mindful walking or some other contemplative practice, that something else begins to happen inside of them. They may encounter a feeling of discomfort or have a memory that's painful or, or some other sensation that brings back a difficult time in life. And people, of course, think, well, what is going on? My spiritual practice was such a source of comfort, and now it's uncomfortable. It's important in those moments to recognize that what's happening is you're simply going deeper and deeper inside. And as you're going deeper and deeper, you're encountering aspects of yourself that haven't been fully healed. There's a lack of integration, there's, there's a remnant of something painful, there's something there that needs to be worked through. It's also important to remember that this isn't therapy. So working through this doesn't mean, oh, I'm going to stop and analyze it and figure out what this is all about. That's for therapy. That's not for spiritual practice. In spiritual practice, when that happens, when you experience something difficult, it's important to simply note it, to say, okay, I got it, check mark by that box. I can come back to it later and just return to your practice, whether it's following your breathing or repeating a prayer word or whatever it is that helps you return to that sense of center. And then afterwards, if you choose to try to unpack whatever it was that happened, that's fine. You could do it through journaling, or if you're in therapy, you can talk to your therapist about it. But it's important to remember that in spiritual practice, it's a matter of simply going deeper and going with it and not getting caught up in what you're experiencing, but returning to your practice time and time again. And that's the most common form of healing that happens with spiritual practice. Now, other people have other ways in which they experience healing related to contemplative practice. You know, often when we're engaged in contemplative practice over time, there are a lot of days where we're putting in the time and just doing what we need to do and nothing much is happening. But then there are periods when it feels like we're going you know, really in a deep or expansive or full and rich way into the practice. And those are really wonderful times. For me, one of the things that happens when I'm in those periods where my practice is really very rich is that I'll often have dreams. And those dreams will be about dreams at night. Uh, they will be dreams about difficult times in my life. Uh, people I've had difficulty with, hard situations for me, things that are somehow unresolved that I didn't realize were not resolved. One of those recent dreams went something like this. And this I'm sharing this because this is sort of the common pattern for me. Uh, I, I, in my dream, I was talking with a person who I had some difficulty with many years ago. And I don't remember what we were saying but I remember the, the feeling of great discomfort while I was in my dream. And then what I do remember was saying, I'm done here. I've had enough. 
and turned and walked down a hallway towards something that was luminous. And that's when I woke up. And I sat up in bed and took a few deep breaths and thought about it. And, and I realized that I felt really free, like I had just let go of something. So for me, this letting go happens in this combination of my practice being really rich and full. And then at night in my dreams, something will happen that gets released. For other people, it happens in different ways from either of the two types that I described. I know people who have talked about returning to places where they used to live or be in their early life. Maybe they went to their childhood church and you know did some meditation in the church, or they were out hiking someplace where they hadn't been hiking for a long while, and, and they sat there for a while. And it was in these settings that they had a sense of everything being okay or hearing a voice of affirmation or somehow experiencing some experience of wholeness. But it always was in combination of having done some other contemplative practice regularly in their life. A woman told me at one time that you know, she had difficulties with her mother and her mother had passed and she really felt like she was never sure that her mother ever loved her. And one day she was walking a labyrinth as she did sometimes. And as she was walking into the labyrinth, she had the feeling that her mother was with her. She had this sense that her mother was there. And as she got to the middle of the labyrinth, she had this overwhelming sense of her mother's love. And she just felt loved unconditionally by her mother. She stayed there with it for a few minutes and then walked back out of the labyrinth. And she said that ever since then, she has felt like her mother always loved her, even though they had lots of conflicts and difficulties in their relationships. These are all different kinds of emotional healing that happen for us in relationship to contemplative practice. You may experience something similar or your pattern may be different. What's important to realize is that when we're engaged in a contemplative practice, going deeper and deeper into, into our inner light, our inner space, that place where we are uniquely ourselves, where we encounter the divine, it's there that things will be brought to light and brought to healing. Sometimes they're very difficult things like old trauma or abuse. But more often, there are things like microaggressions or difficult situations or moments of embarrassment. And all of those things begin to come up and float away from us. We're able to let them go and allow those aspects of ourself to be healed. And it's a, a really beautiful and wonderful thing. It's really a gift of contemplative practice. Be sure to subscribe to this channel, like the video, share it with others, click that bell, leave me some comments. I always look forward to comments and know that I really appreciate your time today, that you took time to share in this video on spirituality beyond borders. Have a great day.